Much like in life, you just need to make sure that the tool you're working with, be it a chisel, a gouge, even a screwdriver, or your brain, is actually up to the task. Need some sharp tools, haven't used these for a while, and uh, I want it to go right. First try. Well, that's a start, onto the strop. This is a double beveled chisel. It is gonna allow me to get in inside curves, uh, in the inside curves uh, around this neck joint. And uh, I love using it. Hmm. A little bit more on the high stone here. And then the final thing is to use a strop. In this case, I don't have my normal strops here, but this is a tool that we make at Crimson Guitars. It's essentially a fret strop. It's a piece of high grade leather impregnated, well, I have impregnated it with uh, polishing compounds. And this is the thing that gets this edge to the absolute pinnacle of perfection a particularly pleasing pastime. Actually, on double beveled chisels and knives and things like that, I personally find it far easier to gauge the, the angle by holding the strop and moving the strop as the tool rather than moving the, the tool on the strop. It's, there are a million ways to do this, he says being grossly factually incorrect, I'm sure. But uh, this works for me. Oh, yes, it does. Now, the secret to a perfectly or properly sharp tool is that you need to polish both faces in this case, we've got a, a, a flat face on, on the chisel, and then you've got the beveled edge. And we want the bevel and the flat face to meet at as clean of a point as humanly possible. If you, for example, stop at the, say, 500 grit, then you're gonna have 500 grit scratches all the way along the, the, the cutting edge. And that is perfectly fine if you are hammering your way through, I don't know, a door frame or something like that. Uh, essentially, you've got a serrated edge, a micro serrated edge, and, uh, you know, it does the job. It will cut through. Uh, if you stab this through your hand, for example, uh, it will hurt more. Uh, the finer we go, the finer those serrations become, and at some point, with the strop and polishing compound, you, uh, you end up with potentially micron level sharpness. If you were to only sharpen or polish one edge of the chisel, then uh, you would not get a sharp tool. There are jigs and uh, other, other sharpening methods, you know, the, 
scary sharp system using wet and dry paper, for example, bevel finders, etc. They are all valid. They all have their place. And I tend to use stones. It's a bit of a Zen thing for me. It takes a little bit longer. I feel I get more precise results. I was trained to, uh, to do it without a, a bevel gauge to uh, uh, show me where, where I'm at. Uh, I tend not to use micro bevels on the edge of the chisel. That's where you, you, you cut your primary bevel at 25 degrees or 30 degrees, depending on what you want to uh, achieve. And then you cant it up another half degree or degree to get your final polish on just that very, very, very edge of the tool. Uh, all of these things are perfectly fine. And I suggest you experiment and practice and see what works for you. Even stropping has uh, many different options. You can use uh, Jewelers Rouge or polishing compounds, etc. You can use uh, Autosol Chrome Polish if you can get the cap back on. And, um, oi, there we go. Uh, just a good quality, nice flat hard piece of wood will do the job as well. You don't have to have leather. Uh, you can strop on glass even. You could spend an entire career experimenting with different ways to sharpen a tool and not get bored. Well, I could. I have. Hyper-focus, baby, hyper-focus.